Assalamualaikum and very good morning to everybody. Uh, as mentioned, my name here is there. Here, uh, my disclaimer, I have no financial interest in any material or mention or method mentioned. This is my outline presentation. Actually, there are a lot to cover in 30 minutes, so I try my best to compress my presentation. Let, uh, let's start the introduction. This is the first coaching technique, which is uh, the first treating cataract since fifth century. From what I have read, coaching was typically uh, performed major cataract. The cataract lens was not removed from the eye. They just locate the lens from the visual axis. Then patient become aphakia and they have slight improvement in vision. This is a cataract surgery evolution. Maybe you can read after this because I'm not planning to talk much about that. Uh, in just to tell you, the first IOL implant in was occurred in 1949 by Sir Harold Ridley, and they face, uh, he facing post-op refractive surprise because that one at that on that time the formula not proper. It's not proper calculation. Uh, I can skip this slide also. Maybe you can have from the organizer after this. So I want to show the formula, the first generation SRK formula, which is uh, not recommended for lens calculation nowadays. What I'm trying to show here is the importance of measuring biometry in the right way to get the exact IOL power. If the measurement is not performed accurately, patient may come out with significant refractive error. As you can see, this basic formula only use three variables. A constant is a fixed number by lens supplier. We are unable to adjust it, but we can try minimize the outcome error by provide good measurement in axial length and corneal measurement. As you can see, the IOL formula keep updating year by year. The older formula were based on normal eyes. They look at eyes without evaluating other variables such as effective lens position. AC depth and white to white measurement so that in high myopia or high hypropia, they got somewhat imprecise outcome. For a long time, uh, surgeons were using third generation formula, Coffer Q, Holiday One, and SRKT, SRKT for a long time. So they agreed the third generation formula were working well. Even this formula used only two variables, which is keratometer, keratometry and axial length. Multiple articles shown that the holiday works, holiday one works best for the average eye, as RKT works best for long eyes, and the Hofer Q works best for short eye. The fourth gen and fifth generation formula made, uh, use many variables such as keratometer, as a length, as depth, and lens thickness, horizontal white to white, age, free of refraction in the case of the holiday too. Even though the new formula use more variables, that doesn't necessarily mean that they have clearly superior in all cases to the other one. Some study found that none of the latest generation formula significantly outperformed the other one. Some researchers found that they show label formula in terms of how they calculate the IOL power. Some of them based on a ray tracing, virgin formula, and some of them use artificial intelligence algorithm. So the engineer and mathematician work very hard for algor algorithm development. That's uh, error in, we call it, we, we use much on artificial intelligence, such as IOL master. I'm bio this is the important topic for today. Biometry is the process of measuring the power of the cornea and the axial length to determine the ideal intraocular lens power. 
we have a um, few method to measure axial length, which is using ultrasound and partial coherent interferometry. In the ultrasound, we have two uh, types, which is acclination and immersion. And partial coherent interferometry, which is artificial intelligence now, is we use, uh, there's too many um, machines in the market. So I just list out three of them, which I familiar one. Actually, uh, banyak lagi eh, dalam market. Azelang is the measurement of distance between the anterior surface of the cornea and the phobia in millimeters. Ultrasound is a sound wave with frequency higher than 20,000 hertz. Ultrasound devices operate with frequency from 20 kilohertz up to several gigahertz. Ultrasound is commonly used for medical diagnostic and the principle is sound as a me he use uh, it's used many sound as a mechanical wave. The wave will vibrate when hit the object. The energy of vibration then transported through a media such as air, solid, water, and for human tissues. Sound wave is character characterized by velocity. Velocity is equal to wavelength time frequency. What is velocity? Velocity is the speed of propagation of the wave. Frequency is the number of complete cycle per unit of time, and whereby wavelength is the distance traveled by one cycle. So in biometry machine, what we have to do is set, we need to set every media velocity correctly. Make sure you familiar with the media velocity in our eyes. Each scan machine will come up, will come along with transducer, amplifier, and display monitor. A thin parallel sound beam is emitted from the probe tip with an echo bouncing back into the probe tip as, as the sound beam hits each interface. An interface is the junction between two media of different density and velocity. In the eyes, the media including cornea, aqueous, lens, vitreous, retina, sclera, have their own density and velocity. The echo we receive back into the probe from this interface, then converted by the biometer as a spike rising from the baseline. The greater the difference in the two media density and velocity, the stronger the echo and the higher the spike. When doing ultrasound biometry, we need familiar with all this. What is echo, gain, resolution, and gates? Echo, this slide is actually, <laughs> in ophthalmology, most A scan and B scan ultrasound probe use frequency approximately 10 megahertz that is pre-designed by the manufacturer. This frequency allow restricted depth of penetration of the sound into the body and excellent resolution of small structure of the eyes. The velocity of sound is determined completely by the density of the medium, which is passes travel faster through solid than through liquid, an important principle to understand because the eyes is composed of both. In the A scan, the view in the screen is presenting in amplitude modulation, and B scan view, the view is presenting in brightness modulation, modulation on the screen. What is an echo? An echo is reflection of sound wave. The sound wave will vibrate when hit hard object in the same way as a rubber ball bounces off the ground. Echoes form an acoustic interfaces at the junction of media with different sound velocity and densities, so that it is very important to us record anything changes in the eyes during surgery like aphasia, silicone oil inside the eyes. 
Acoustic interface can occur at cornea, aqueous, vitreous, and soft teeth and bone. The greater the difference in the refractive media of the two media interface, the stronger the echo spike. The gain. The gain is setting on biometer is measured in decibel. It will affect amplification and resolution of spike. With high gain, allow increased penetration through the media and will displace high platen spike with low resolution. Too low, too low gain will decrease the penetration through media and decrease spike amplitude, amplitude in the display and eliminate the weaker signal. With optimum gain, the resolution is better. Resolution is the ability of the machine to display two interfaces that lie in close proximity as separate equals. This is the effect of the gain. The picture, the picture show the effect of the high gain on the retina and sclera spike. As you can see, if adequate gain, there is a small gap between retina and sclera spike. Here, retina and sclera spike and compare with the high gain here. There are no gap, is it? Can see? And also with the cornea lens and the, and the uh, cornea and lens. Here, we, there is a, we uh, got a gap, but if you use high gain, the gap is very small. Gates are electronic calipers on the display screen that measure the distance between two points. Proper gate placement is important. If the biometer machine does not allow for movement of gate, scan must be repeated until they automatically align properly. It is to make sure the correct velocity of sound between each pair. The diagram show the, the diagram show the correct gate is supposed to be in place. Ini adalah gate yang kena ada dekat machine dan pastikan bila kita buat if uh, when we do the biometry, we have to check the gate in the correct place. Yeah. Okay. This picture show us the effect of, of axillary measurement if the gate is in the wrong place. As you can see, gate in number two and three here, in the upper picture, is not correct, not correct lah. Suppose the gate is in the lower picture. You can see the difference of the SLM length? About two, 0 0.2 millimeters. Before we start measurement, make sure the setting of biometry machine are in a good one. Usually supplier already set up accordingly and, uh, and as a practitioner, we have to confirm that. In the, this is the velocity, our eyes velocity, media velocity. So we have to confirm in the machine this, they are setting in the correct velocity. Again, this slide to this, uh, I want to show you the ultrasound technique one by one here, explanation and emotion. Uh, in explanation, a probe is placed on the patient's cornea the probe is attached to a device that delivers adjustable sounds. Sorry. The probe is attached to device that delivers adjustable sound waves. The measurements are displayed as a spike on the screen monitor. The appearance of the spike and the distance between them can be correlated to structure within the eyes and the distance between them. Biasa tengok kan? Contact um, explanation in uh, explanation or contact techniques. Make, uh, if you do the contact technique, make sure you have to achieve five clear echo spike of maximum height and descending orbital fat. You also have to ensure the sclera spike is present and each echo is deeply rising 90, 90 degree angle to the baseline like this. Here, the spot, as we discussed earlier, this measurement in effect in the phakic eye type. We have to make sure there are five uh, steep rising spikes. 
One, two, three, four, and five. And the orbital fat, usually we have down staircase punya pattern. So this is uh, in a explanation punya technique. This is uh, to show you the the previous picture, like, the, like to show you the effect of the gain, how the how the gain affect the resolution of the spike. Okay, who know what's wrong with this spike? Who can guess? Is it wrong? There are only four echo spikes. This picture is actually we do the biometer in the Ethiopia punya eyes. No lens. See? See? There's no lens. There are five tips in performing explanation or contact scan. One is uh, please use correct velocity of each of the media. And number two, make sure five equal, clear equals part of map and descending of the pad. Number three, initially start with low gain, low gain, then we try increase the gain if the equals does not reach maximum amplitude. Number four, start always keep. I always check the standard deviation. Usually we take the SD less than 0.3 millimeters if possible. And number five, different in azure line between both eyes must less than 0.3 millimeters unless there is a reason of that. Here, we go to the immersion punya part. Immersion technique is Employ to eliminate cornea compression as an error factor in axial length. A sclera shell is placed on the eye to provide a water bath over the cornea and stabilize the glow, keep the eye, eyelid open, allow proper alignment of the probe to the visual axis. The water bath provides a medium through which the probe can measure the eyes without touching the cornea. Why this technique produce? It is eliminate. It is to eliminate the risk of indentation, so that the azure measurement can be more accurate. It produces less cornea irritation to the patient's eye, and some may say it takes less time for measurement. But personally, for me, it is not due to it take time for some preparation of the instrument, patient, and the machine as well. Commonly, using immersion technique, the measurement value compared to the explanation is about 0.1 to 0.3 millimeter longer. Uh, you all can watch a proper video in the internet because we don't have much time to play the video here. This is uh, the transparent shell here, we call it Prager shell. Here is the immersion biometry checklist. Uh, we have to prepare the SK machine. We have to um, prepare the Prager shell, make sure to sterilize, to sterilize the probe, sterilize the Prager shell, prepare the screen monitor, and then we have to prepare the examination, examiner position, make sure the height is good, the, the height of measurement is good. And then we have to prepare the patient. Patient, patient. We have to do the emission technique in the uh, in patient have to uh, in the supine position or reclining position. And then we have to perform examination, emission examination, and analyze data and finishing the examination. Uh, in the if you go to an OBC course, they teach detail on this immersion technique, more detail and other practical. In the emission technique, in the in the emission technique, if you measure the fakix eye, the echo spike will have six uh, six maximum height spike. Actually, uh, here you can see banyak kan? Actually, we just yang maximum saja. One, A, B, C, D, E, F. Ada enam. Eco spike. 
and the orbital fat biasanya dia akan jadi staircase down macam application just dia tambah satu lagi spike depan probe punya spike ya yeah. so dalam uh, immersion kita mesti ada enam spike ni Dissecting is can print out when the ultrasound is can reserve uh, result given uh, give to you. Make sure all this must be checked out. One, compare the value with uh, with the respective state of the eye. In hyperopia, commonly have short axial length or flat cornea curvature and vibrosa with the myopia. And then always evaluate with pre cataract refractive. Yeah, sorry. And then as a length difference between two eyes should not exceed 0.3 millimeter unless explainable. And then look out for any evidence of an isometropia, sclera buckling surgery or previous refractive surgery. Make sure correct scan data entry, adequate gain use and correct setting. In both ultrasound technique, there is factor that can affect the spike quality. It is conceived of regularity of interface. A perfect high stiffly rising retina spike may be impossible when macular pathology is present, such as macular edema. And then the poor spike quality might be from the density of the media. Many adjustment of gain always start with lower gain first and depend on, and then you increase step by step. And Spike also the quality the poor quality spike also can be affected by angle of the incident. Here, this picture does uh, show how the angle and incident affect the echo spike. As you can see here, misalignment, misalignment demonstrated by the decrease amplitude of the posterior lens spike here. If the angle incident, uh, the punya spike tu takkan naik lah kalau kita off axis, visual axis. Yeah. Same goes with this picture. Uh, if you, if the visual, if we off the visual exists, sometimes we don't have the scleral spike. The scleral spike is absent because uh, this usually the probe may be aligned along the optic nerve. And then the beam is not perpendicular. And the second picture here, the beam is not perpendicular to the macular spike. Surface. Sometimes we can see the retina not steeply rising. They akan ada bumpy bumpy uh, spike kat bawah tu. Yeah. So we have, as a practitioner, we need to alert the, all this now. This is a limitation of the ultrasound biometry because it's used broad sound beam without uh, precise location. It is difficult to determine between anatomy or refractive as a name. So, again, potential source error in measurement, like I mentioned just now, uh, ultrasound between explanation in the immersion, corner uh, if you use explanation, they have corner compression. So, the solution we use immersion or optical biometer. Uh, and then, we, if we have misalignment of sound beam, Maybe we can validate with the other operator and incorrect setting on biometer, eye type, gas, gates or mode. Make, always make a checklist and always make a second of eye check. Maybe the second operator can check for that. Indentation. Um, this, uh, maybe I can skip this because I talk at this part actually. Cornea indentation can make the shallow entry chamber. Is you can see this happen usually happen in the explanation punya mode. Yeah, uh, validation. I skip this. Okay, we go to the uh, optical biometry. Optical biometry um, use optical low coherent reflectometry, reflectometry similar technology on OCT devices. This technology. This technology results in highly accurate measurement of the eye using light in comparison to the sound. Principle optical biometry, um, partial coherent interferometry were produced by diode laser, measure echo delay and intensity of infrared 
light reflected back from the tissue interfaces. The interferon produces dark and light band pattern, which is detected by a photoreceptor. The signal are amplified, filtered, and recorded as a function of the position of the interferometer, interferometer mirror. An optical encoder is used to convert the measurement into millimeters as your length. This is the machine um, in the market. And in our setting, we have IOM master, only IOM master. And the important thing is you have to make sure this uh, the parameter that the uh, always know your machine. Lah. You have to uh, familiar with your machine, what it can measure or what can the tabula measure. Lah. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to make sure the machine calib how the machine calibrated. Um, there are four easy steps to perform optical biometry life pro. Uh, same like the immersion one, you have to prepare the machine, the patient, and then do the five step in performing opt optical biometry. And then we have a tip and trick, advantage and disadvantage. Maybe we can skip this slide. Machine preparation, set up the right. Actually, this is good for practical session. Set up the right display and make sure you have to, you know the status of the patient's eye. Maybe the others, uh, uh, FPK, uh, maybe in patient in the FPK mode or silicon fill eye. So, uh, that's very important because uh, the punya measurement akan lari if the setting incorrect. Set up the right IOL calculation. Once all the measurements have been taken, IOL power can be calculated depending on the IOL calculation formula. In the IOL master, usually we have Haggis, Hofer Q, Holiday, SRK2, SRKT, and Haggis L formula. This is five step in performing optical biometer. Remove spectacle, head, uh, head position, Make sure patient put on the chin and head rest properly. Focus on the target. Hold, hold still for the required length of time and taking the measurement. Tip and trick in performing optical biometer. When the, to repeat the measurement, how to ensure the centration of visual assist, how to get the patient to appropriate. This is always um, set in your mind. Uh, this question is... Um, I take this question from the NOBC punya course. So selalunya kita akan interface with this uh, condition lah. So kita kena fikir macam mana kita nak buat the biometry, biometry tu dengan baik. When to repeat the measurement? Uh, this is the very important part. According to the CATRAC National Database Electronic Multi Center Audit, the measurement has to be repeated when the six items occur without explainable. One is as your length is less than 21 or more than 26 mm. And number two, mean cornea, mean cornea power is less than 41 diopter or more than 47 diopter. Delta, del, delta K is the astigmatism punya different, is more than 2.5 diopter. And then number four, different in as length between fellow eyes of the Fellow eyes is more than 0 0.77 millimeter. Different in mean cornea power, more than 0 0.9 diopter. And the SNR, signal noise ratio, is less than 1.6 to 2.0. Dissecting optical biometry. When using optical biometry, always refer to the SNR value. The higher the SNR, the better the signal quality. The SNR is a measure of accuracy and decreases with increasing cataract density. The SNR is automatically analyzed while the system is internally, internally calculating the exit length from the inter interference signal. In the IOM printout, we, uh, the SNR represent as a symbol to indicate status, as you can see in the slide. During uh, signal noise ratio, good SNR, uncertain value. During examination, we got this color code. 
green color code indicate the reading is valid, yellow code indicate the reading is uncertain, and the red code is displayed indicate incorrect value and reading should not be used. How to ensure the centration of the visual axis? I always ask the patient to focus on target and align the device and the patient precisely prior to the measurement and always take more than one measurement, always ask the patient to blink and try to acquire image after allowing the tear film to spread about four seconds. Advantage of optical biometry, rapid and easy, extensive integrated safety feature, non-contact measurement and operator independent, give the uh, optical biometry, give the true reflective length than anatomical exit length, and highly reproducible method accuracy of ION master is 0.02 micrometer. Optical biometry take retina thickness into account and highly emetropic patient can wear glasses, but this dish uh, I never, we, we, we never use in our setting. Even though the ION master punya supplier dalam buku manual ada. Kita check patient menggunakan glasses. So the patient can fix it well to the light. Uh, and then number eight, well suit to some special condition, extremely short eye, long eye with post retina. Yes, it's easy to to it's easy to get the as length for the uh, patient yang ada high or low, uh, high myop or high hypro, because patient can fix it. And the immersion or explanation, sometimes patient the lost the punya fixation. Limitation of optical biometry, unable to measure as the length, and then difficult in infant mentally handicapped patient. Sebab dia tak boleh nak letak duduk diam diam kan? And then of course it's expensive. Measurement of ultrasound optical biometer. Frequently measurement by PCI longer than ultrasound. Why? Because the different measurement between ultrasound and optical meter, the, uh, in the ultrasound, the endpoint of uh, measurement is in the neural retina layer, whereby in the optical biometer, biometer the endpoint is in the retina pigment epithelium. As I mentioned earlier, uh, with the with the IL master, patient can fix it the light, so we can get true measurement through the virtual axis compared to, compared to the ultrasound. Okay, okay last, last, gratometer. Sorry, boleh? Uh, gratometer is essential in biometry punya, in IOI calculation. Gratometer is used, boleh skip. Uh, normal range of K reading is 42 to 44. Different of K reading between two eyes should be within one diopter. And then K reading less than 40 diopter and more than 47 are assumed unusual or abnormal K reading. So we have to repeat and check it. Uh, there, are, uh, there are many types of gratometer in the market. Uh, there are the manual and auto one. Usually we use one position, Bosch and Long, because it's contain two prism and easy and easy to use compared to the Javal shot. Javal shot, um, so far dah lama pun kita tak guna because the agak susah sedikit compared to the one position. And then we have the auto punya keratometer. Kita boleh dapat key reading from the topography, topo, konya topographer auto K, optical biometer itself, plastic, uh, and then topography, dia ada guna plastidodis or shimplak punya teknik. Here is the keratometer in the market. Ini adalah ini adalah uh, jawal shot punya keratometer. Tapi kita tak ada dalam, kebanyakan setting tak adalah benda ni. Biasanya kita akan guna yang A punya type. Yeah. And B, C, E dan F adalah tergolong dalam auto punya keratometer. Manual, maybe you can read my slide after this. Auto kratometer, some days, uh, sama juga. Soalannya, okay. Konya coverage. Always understand the area of konya zone of your kratometer machine, able to measure so that, so that it gives better illustration how the patient anterior konya surface was. 
For example, the central zone between three to four millimeter usually measured by one step manual K, manual K, and that is very crucial. This area is very crucial due to lo along with the visual axis. If something happened, the vision may deteriorate. Different, okay. Uh, automated K with IOM master usually uh, here is um, actually IOM master can measure a total five to ten millimeters zone. Uh, this and two point five millimeter only at the central cornea, uh, and the cornea topographer which will measure wide uh, around 10, 11 to twelve millimeter. It provides reading at almost entire anterior cornea surface. Um, this is manual K1 position gratometer. How to do? <laughs> In practically, if you have a time, make sure you come and uh, try make a gratometer. How uh, try as optometrist how to do the gratometer correctly? We have to see. Um, this image, the D image is the correct punya image. B, uh, dia tak superimpose lagi. A pun sama, C pun sama. Dia tak superimpose. Dia punya negative and positive punya sign tu kan. So, tak payahlah. Automated K will give qualitative value and quantitative value. It is important to note that for automated K reading, three measurement within 0 0.25 different for each meridian are essential for validation. So setiap uh, dia punya automated K dia akan biasanya dia akan ambil tiga measurement and then kalau dia punya measurement tiga tu dia punya gap tu but lebih daripada 0.25 biasanya dia akan ukur lagi banyak kali lah. Tu dia punya kelebihan untuk automated K. Advantage of automated K. Okay, basic K, uh, understanding uh, basic understanding K reading value. K1 is the flattest one. K1 is the most flattest one. We commonly write in diopter, which, 40, which is 43. 7.32 is a radius in millimeter, frequently used in contact length cal calculation. For now, always consider the diopter part. The difference between the horizontal and the vertical meridian constitute the cornea astigmatism. In this case, the cornea astigmatism is about minus 1 times 90, as we, as we consider in negative cylinder. So the axis is the most flattest one or lowest diopter power. When to repeat gratometer, the K reading need to validate by second operator if the condition is like poor patient fixation, positioning, or we encounter any abnormal reading between both eyes without any reason, or we suspect error in the instrument. Remember, always keep the calibration record consistently. As a human, operator variability is, is always there. Any dry eyes, cornea decompensated can make trouble some during examination and lead to variable value of irregular distorted Maya. Sometimes need, we need to treat with artificial tears first before the examination and make patient comfortable before take the reading. Mm, let's skip this one. Verification of a scan. Okay, last. Compare of azelian value in both eyes, please validate if different between the two eyes more than 0 0.3 millimeter, the azelian less than 20.1 or more than 26. I said just uh, actually this slide already discussed in the explanation punya part tadi kan. Sama sajalah sebenarnya. Azelian correspond poorly with clinical data and we also validate if difficulty in obtaining measurement, check the scan, echo spike, correct gate gain, eye type. Always do B scan to confirm if there are any unexplained azure length. One millimeter error will cause 0, 3 to 3.5 diopter error in IOL power. This is verif verification of query reading. Same cornea power different between the two eyes more than one. Cornea power is less than 41 or more than 47. Need or uh, need second punya operator untuk check out the amount of cornea astigmatism fully correlate with manifest reflection and any abnormal or unexplained carry must further verify. Hmm, sebenarnya dah cakap tadi juga kan? <laughs> Discuss the patient of, uh, and then ensure a good tear film is 
not must be stated. Do suspect the previous refractive surgery, surgery if K is too flat. If the toracity of the cornea is high, decide whether to place the wound at the steeper axis. Yang ni nanti doktor surgeon akan ajar lah. Mm, verification of IOL calculation, IOL power between what eyes should not be exceed more than one unless explainable. If the patient had has prior crato refractive surgery and the calculated IOL power is not flat. 20, plus 20 or plus 23, maybe you can suspect something. Lah. Okay, this is take home message. My last slide. Uh, in pre op, always well planning for threat surgery. Post op, always review or post op, you should be a to look for any repetitive surprise. Always optimum use what we have. Always discuss patient with discuss with patient to get best post operative result what to aim for. And last but not least, I suggest you go to National Biometric Course. It's a good, very good course. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm a bit master.